Welcome to this episode of the Commissioner's Report on Hurricane Preparedness with our guest, Commissioner Neil Cumby and our Director of Emergency Management, Paul Wumble. Commissioner, tell us a little bit about hurricane preparedness and what we got planned for our residents. Well, I'm not, uh, I'm not the guy to do that. I'll let Paul do it, but I will tell you that uh, the time to prepare is before the storm gets here. And uh, I happened to be the, had the privilege of being the chairman of the county commission back in 2004 when Charlie, Francis, Jean, and we're talking here, actually Ivan came close. And uh, so I got a firsthand look along with Paul and everybody else, I'm sure, that was in that business of just, you know, what kind of destruction can take place. But again, I'm 62 years old and, or will be soon, and I don't remember many hurricane names. I mean, so it tells me that, you know, they don't come along very often, but sometimes they, they do make a lasting memory and being prepared uh, before the storm hits is, is really essential to trying to minimize the discomfort that will naturally come from loss of power, uh, roads uh, being impassable. There's ways that you can make it uh, easier to get through. And I know Paul's probably got a list memorized and everybody should follow that list. Yeah, so in 04, when we had the three storms come through, it actually had been since 1960, when Hurricane Donna had directly impacted Polk. So that's a long streak. But then we set a record that year with three storms and actually Polk County sent Ivan hit in the panhandle. Polk County had sent people up there to help, sheriff's office, first responders, emergency management, and they had to come back. Um, that was after Francis and before Gene. So anyway, uh, yeah, being prepared before the storm is the key. Uh, we, we're not a coastal county. We don't have storm surge from a hurricane, but we still have high winds, flooding rain. So knowing what to do, where to go um, before the storm, that's, that's all part of having that disaster plan for your family and your business. Insurance is super important. A lot of people think, well, if we have a storm, the government's, you know, federal government's going to come in and bail us out. That's not the case. Um, so, you know, financial awareness and preparedness should be part of that plan, especially for a business. And then knowing what to do with your, with your family. If you have someone that requires electricity, some type of medical equipment or oxygen dependent, for example, we actually have a program where they can register with us. Uh, with emergency management and we can help them make a plan, help them get some assistance in sheltering. But sheltering should always be the last resort coming to our, our public shelters. And again, that's part of the plan. If you don't have to evacuate, if you don't live in a mobile home, if you don't live in a structure that high wind could destroy, or if you live in an area that historically floods, and those are all over Polk County, um, you get a lot of rain in a short amount of time. Those are the people that really need to have a plan to go somewhere else. Otherwise, in a newer home, you know, new safer home, site built, stay put. You know, make your home stronger, safer, and um, and, and that's really the, the key things for here in Polk County. Yeah, so that's great stuff. So it's all about thinking smart before the storm and then how to react after the storm. Yep. And use the resources that you provide on the Polk County website for them to go and download. I think what you do, how you prepare before the storm is really going to play a big part in how you uh, live for those few days maybe that it will take to restore power um, in, in the amount of discomfort because we're all going to experience some discomfort. And I had the uh, uh, privilege of going down after Andrew with Sheriff Crow and County Manager and we had sent folks down there. and, and uh, you know, that was, Andrew didn't really do anything to us, no. uh, missed us, went out into the Gulf. But, uh, you know, as you say, these things don't come along very often. I was one year old uh, when Donna came through, so I have no memory of Donna. It, it, just another day for me uh, as, a, as a one year old. So, you, as Paul pointed out, really didn't have much to talk about until 2004, and the 2004 was a big year. And you never know when one of those years will come along. But I think it's always best to have those essential basic items on hand. Uh, and as Paul mentioned, you know, the number of your insurance agent, because you might need to be able to get in touch with them pretty quick to let them know that yeah, damage that has occurred there. But the week uh, for the tax-free hurricane shopping ended on Sunday. 
hopefully people took advantage of that that uh, that uh, you know needed to restock or resupply or get some supplies for folks who came here recently from non-hurricane country. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, I don't think it's anything that any of us should lose sleep over, uh, but it always will help you sleep better to know that if there's one coming, you've got, you know, uh, have made some preparations for it. And I know pets are an issue for some people. You didn't mention pets, but I guess the yeah. county may a long guy offer guidance there. We, we do, we actually have three uh, shelters identified as pet friendly and that should be part of your plan you know my my grandmother had eight cats you know after my grandfather died and you know she was alone in the family the big family house here in Bartow I mean th that was her family so her then the, the plan had to be well you know she was not gonna go to my mom's or go to my aunt's without the cats so you know having a having a plan I mean, that's, pe that's that's people's family so you know some extra pet food um, if you do come, if your plan is to end up in our pet friendly shelters, you know, they have to have proof of vaccination and, you know, come with a carrier and, okay. and those kind of, those kind of things. So it's That's just important information. Yeah. Just simple things like that. Um, again, the, on the county's website, we actually have a, on the, right on the home page, we have a hurricane preparedness link where if you click that, it'll take you down. It'll show us a, a shopping list information about shelters, information about our special needs program, all, all the things everybody needs to put a plan together is right there. I don't even know what, and Paul may know the answer to this, what, you know, what the percentage uh, uh, chances are that, that we would take a direct hit. It's got to be extremely low uh, every year when you look at the fact that, you know, from Donna to, to uh, Charlie Francis and Jean was what, 40, 44, 44 years? 44 years. 44 years before, when there really wasn't much of any activity. I recall uh, Hurricane Elena, I said before we started taping, I can remember it just because it blew over an oak tree that was a favorite of mine that was growing there. And other than that, I don't hardly remember uh, in those 44 years another hurricane name to speak of. Uh, yeah, that's, that's good And I lived here in my entire life. That's good information to share yeah. because there's a lot of new people moving to Polk County. We do have these hurricanes. They do affect us in some way, but it's rare that we get a direct impact. Right. Well, that should provide some comfort to people who aren't from here and have only, you know, been here a few years, maybe thinking that you know they've moved into Hurricane Alley when there really isn't much of a yeah. such of a thing as Hurricane Alley. You you mentioned Andrew. That was in August of that year in '92, I believe, but and that yeah. was the A storm, so the first name storm happen well into the hurricane season. So it only takes one. You know, we, we certainly hope it's never here in Polk County. Um, but if it is, you know, Irma, Hurricane Irma in, in 2017, you know, the morning after that hit on a Sunday night. So into Monday morning, you know, about 80, 85% of the county had no power. And I know there were folks with Irma, and I know my family, my brother lived, lives here in Bartow and back in 04, I mean, a couple weeks. If you don't have power at home for two weeks, or even a week, even a day, it's an inconvenience. Now, how are you gonna cook? How are you gonna open cans of food where you have non-perishables, you know, a manual can opener? Uh, how are you gonna communicate? You know, we're so dependent on cell phones now and having to be a way to recharge those and get information. Uh, all, all important things that, you know, folks should figure out based on their sit living situation, their home, uh, their and, work, their family. And for goodness sakes, if people uh, buy a generator uh, with the idea of using it when the power goes out, they need to take precaution and make sure. I think that's one of the biggest things yes. that uh, where, where you have a loss of life is people try to use them inside the house. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's, there's some things you need to understand about that. And maybe, I don't know if we'd put out information there related is. to that as well. There that, is. We saw that after Irma, people were running generators, uh, you know, inside on garages, and and, and it, it 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 was a it was an issue. Most of our fatalities in in the county historically have been after the storm. People running generators, you know, trying to clean up. You know, power lines are down, so you just got to wait it out until you know it's safe. You don't want to venture out, especially in the first day. You know, everybody wants to go outside and see what happens, but. Yeah. That's the, probably the most dangerous time, one of the most dangerous times once the winds have died down until the power companies have gotten out and we've been able to get crews out, you know, the sheriff's office and county's roadway 
staff to get out and assess, push trees, make sure it's safe, just stay put. Yeah, this is all great information. And to me, it's amazing how well the community pulls together and we support each other um, in the time of need. But before we go, let's share these resources and where our residents can actually find this information so they're thinking smart and working towards the right step. Yeah, county website, www.polk-county.net. Great. And right on the home page, there's a hurricane preparedness a button, an icon there. If you click that, that'll take you to you know, we've, we've assembled all the information in, in one spot. Good to know. All right, gentlemen, well, thanks for joining us today. Definitely an important topic. Join us next time on the Commissioner's Report.